Yes, thank you very much. Okay, so thank you for having me and for all the other great lectures. Uh, so, yeah, I'm Sunna and I'm a digital artist at Kakari. And my background is in uh, film and so uh, animation and visual effects in film and TV shows. But uh, I've been working at Kakarin for the past a bit over three years now. So Kakarin has 30 years of experience in creating award-winning interactive experiences. And we mostly design for exhibitions, museums and brands. And we are very passionate about weaving education, information, and data into compelling stories that leave a lasting impression on visitors. So we are here to talk about how we can use technology to preserve cultural her heritage. And many of them are outdoors. So how might we design an experience which allows people to be outdoors and have a seamless extended reality experience? Uh, I'm going to share insight into two of the recent projects, XR, XR projects that we've done. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about how we made some decisions and a little bit more behind the scenes. So I will start with Tinkerlish, uh, the well-known Tinkerlir. I think everyone, most people know that place. And that was launched in June last year. So we already made, five years ago, we made an indoor exhibition. Uh, it, it's quite a large exhibition in Tinkerlir called Heart of Iceland. And here you can see some images from the installations. And uh, we were then asked to come up with a solution how to make uh, a solution that would work outside, that would highlight some of the archeo uh, archaeological findings in the area. So a little bit about Tinkerthe, what we took in mind when we designed this. So everyone, this is how most people know Tinkerthe, the beautiful nature and the heart of the nation first parliament, but it's also a remote area with heavy winters and conditions can be quite harsh in the place. And when I say harsh, they can get quite, yeah, very harsh. <laughs> so this is a little bit about the concept. So um, what happened in the park? And it's an outdoors, in a rural environment, with no uh, access to electricity. And we want to show how the events happen in that place. So what could it have looked like when they gathered here every year? So the concept is to see into the past of Altingu. Can you think of it? So, our solution uh, is what we call the Outdoor Explorer. And this is on a, is a yeah, mobile XR, XR version. And the concept of this is that it's a simple QR code that you scan and which is easy to use. Most people know QR codes. Uh, it works on smartphones. Uh, there's no app needed, like uh, Eric talked about. It. You don't need to do the extra step of downloading something, waiting for it to download, and people people don't have the patience for that sometimes. So it's a it just opens up and uh, it opens up opens up in the browser, so it's quite fast to load. And this works in heavy weather and all year round, so you can yeah. So this is how it works. There was a new pathway built in Tinkerlir around the, in this area and uh, so we placed signs along the pathways with information and, and illustrations and there's also a QR code in the corner where, where you can scan and look into the past and I have a little video for you. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
to the creation of, of this. So on the right you can see a map, a top-down map of the area and the yellow line is where the new pathway is and all the uh, archaeological findings, the houses and booths. And we decided to map out where we wanted to have the scenes happen. So you can see the numbers there. Uh, so then we made uh, panorama pictures and started to draw the, the story so we can kind of came up with stories what's happening there what, who is who is what are those people what are they doing and just and um, and then we were also uh, partnered with uh, some archaeologists and uh, the client of course to decide how we're going to do the layouts how many houses are how how big of a uh, not the town, but the, of the area, how many houses were, how many people, and such stuff. So it's also uh, some notes from the clients, what we were going to choose. Uh, then we took some 3D, uh, 360 photos from the location of each scene. And it's a 360 because we wanted the user to be able to look all around. And we did uh, green screen filming with actors and contacted the lighting community and got all the right flowing and so it was it felt real and um, then for the post processing of the Vikings we, we kind of call them ghosts because they yeah the, it was a decision to make them stylized like these ghosts because that's how the one of the installation in the indoor exhibition is so we wanted to have it the same in the same style. Uh, then it was time to do uh, the 3D assets. Uh, there were not so many visual references for uh, how these so-called booths look like, but uh, we got information from the archaeologists that they were most likely, uh, most likely with tents on top. I mean, some houses, but it was a mixture of. Uh, so we made quite a few, uh, quite a few iterations of like how they should be. And on the right side, you can see I usually make like um, like a proxy, just like a simple cube, and then where we place them before I put the actual models in. So this is kind of the process. Uh, and here you can see like uh, step by step. So this is the before picture. This is how it looks like today. Then we needed to do some environment cleanup to remove all the paths and the buildings, add a little bit more trees and grass. Then we added the, the houses and the other assets, and then the the ghosts or the Vikings on top. And uh, here is a side by side before and after and in the end of the presentation I will give you a QR code to test so you can test the scenes out yourself. And one last thing about, <laughs> about this project, uh, it's just a small fun fact. So on the signs on the pathway you have these illustrations and this is a uh, this is the scene where uh and I had to the run crop where were uh, the lo the lovers and so and that is actually me and my <laughs> cover <laughs> as a reference model for the this is actually the software de developer that did that and I'm the creator so I thought it was quite funny that we are the we are them in this <laughs> okay so next so Hopstad is another uh, culture that is um, place in Iceland and I think it's a bit lesser known because it's a bit hidden, at least I um, 
maybe the crowd knows better, but I didn't know about this place before this project. And this is an XR project that we launched just recently in August this year. So this is how the site looks like, um, or this photo is taken before we uh, did the installation. So it's a it's a room. It's the uh, remains of a Viking old Viking longhouse that was discovered somewhere in the 1980s, where they were they were actually building a kindergarten and they were digging up the the ground and found the ruins. So they had to. Uh, Change the design of it. So they preserved the area and built a small park around it. And um, yeah, so this is how it looks like. Uh, so the concept is it's an early Viking longhouse and in an uh, urban environment. And I don't know if you can see it. It's like, this is Gardabaj. Uh, if you can't see it, it's here. <laughs> see that? So it's kind of a crap between a parking lot and a kindergarten, and this is Galatorok next to it. But uh, yeah, and but here because it's in the city, we have access to electricity, so we got more options of what we want to do with it. And we want to show what the what life would be like in that place in that time. Uh, so who lived there? what could have been their day-to-day -day activities and uh, the concept is to travel back in time to this place in Hofstadt. So this is another outdoor explorer but in this uh, case we went with uh, a binocular, an XR binocular. Uh, we really wanted to have like a, a physical installation at this place because the it's not as harsh weather as in, in Finland, so um, and a little bit different. So we also think that um, the binoculars, when you see a binocular, you want to go to it, you want to look through it. So they're very uh, easy to use, accessible, and very inviting. And because we have electricity, we have computer power, so we could have a higher quality content there. Um, so this is how it works. There are just three, play, three binoculars placed uh, in the park. You go up to them, there's a button that triggers the experience. And I have a video of that too. first story parts. Like I said, we have three binoculars, so uh, three different views. Two of them are widescreen, which you can, you can pan around and you trigger uh, different animations. And the one on the right is a static, static one, where you see the longhouse building up. So these are like some of the early sketches that we did on the views. And we wanted to have this here and there and create it some stories around it. Uh, my first assignment was, well, one of my first assignments was to start to map out the area because I was supposed to build up the house and put the assets and I wanted to have the scale correct and then all the measurements to make it easier. So I'm also a drone enthusiast like Bob <laughs> and I was happy to be able to use my drone and it's actually my first time doing a photogrammetry with a drone so I was quite excited. So I flew up my drone and took many uh, photos all around the site uh, which I gathered in a software that makes a point cloud and uh, 
from that, I got the textures and everything that created that model that you can see on the bottom left. And I just find these texture maps really funny. It looks like probably very abstract, abstract to you, but this photo in the middle is all the small textures, the, the material and the colors of the model. Uh, there were, in co comparison to Hubele, there were a bit more uh, reference images that I could use for this project. I used uh, Philip the Spider Nella, which is, of course, a replica of a uh, place there, and I had some drawings and more, and then more material to work with. So, the 3D assets, here's some photos from that. Uh, like I said, I used the, the model from the photogrammetry as a base to build that one. Uh, so yeah, you can see the, the roof, like the roof sticks and the, a bit of the build up there. Like this colorful, colorful uh, image is actually um, when I'm painting the, because I recreated the whole environment. So I'm painting the ground, the grass, the rocks, the straws, flowers. So it's, yeah, that's that. And, um, and then we had to also alter the environment because obviously when you are in the place, you just see the houses, you're in the middle of the city. But in these times, you like you see on the bottom where we um, altered, you could actually see to the ocean, you could see the, the land. So that was a bit of a... Uh, we had to recreate that and kind of think out how that really looked like before, before, uh, before all these uh, houses and the city was built. I also went to uh, Hilma to take reference photos of, you see it, uh, of trees and bushes because apparently at this time, this, this is what, the 10th, 11th century, there were much more trees in the area. Uh, again, uh, Great screen filming with Viking people. We even brought a horse on set, which was a fun experience. And uh, this picture of the woman weaving is actually quite interesting because um, these rocks, they're called uh, looms, I think looms. They are actually, these are actually the rocks that were found at the site of Hobbs Village. And we actually, oh, oh, and, oh okay. <laughs> Uh, so here is um, yeah, the step-by-step, the -step, how it is with the environment, the people, and a side-by-side -side picture of how it looks today and how it looks like in the binoculars. Uh, I wanted to mention this one because technology is always evolving and uh, AI has been, artificial intelligence has been very skyrocketing in the last one, two years. Uh, so for this, I actually use AI for this uh, part. So you can see the top, the, the first we made the, the static binocular, it was a white screen that you can see. But then uh, later, before the opening, we had to change it to a square because we changed the view. So I thought it was going to be like a week of work or something to, or maybe not a week, but some days of work to, to fix it, to, oh, I need to fix the ground and everything. But thanks to AI, I was able to do it in less than 10 minutes. <laughs> so that was an easy fix. And I think uh, using stuff like this is going to be more and more uh, yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, that was the last slide from that. I just wanted to mention that uh, these are just two projects that that we have uh, done recently. We have a lot of other pro projects, other uh, like use of other like we have VR, AR, uh, and XR, and all kinds of other. Uh, technology to uh, tell our stories. So yeah, thank you for joining and
Here you can scan if you want to try out the ink that they have. I think we also have it somewhere on paper if you want to touch it. But, yeah, thank you.